Today I fucked up by not turning on the bathroom light, causing my wife to break my face. Last night I woke up at around 3 am and had to use the bathroom. The street lamps in the parking lot of our apartment building provide a decent amount of light through the window for me to be able to see, so I didn't bother turning on the bathroom light, or even closing the door all the way. I finished and flushed, and after I washed my hands I noticed that there was a big ol' hangnail on my thumb. Though I was standing in the middle of the bathroom with not so much light, carefully using a clipper to take care of it. I put the clippers down and I suddenly heard the door open, then all hell broke loose. For background, my wife was raised in a family where for the first 10 years of her life, her family basically lived in the middle of nowhere and were poor enough where they literally had to hunt for food because they couldn't afford groceries, so she learned pretty damn young how to be a deadly force of nature. When she was in high school, her house was burglarized while everyone was sleeping, and she was the one who woke up and witnessed people in the house going through their stuff, and of course that shit was traumatizing. She's also 6 feet 1 inch compared to my 5 feet 8 inches, and she works in an environment where she's constantly having to kick out shoplifters and just straight up sketchy people all the time. So needless to say, she's a fairly on edge, very strong, physically intimidating lady. So when she comes in to use the bathroom and she's not wearing her glasses, meaning she basically can't see six feet in front of her, and sees some figure in the dark just standing in the bathroom, what do her instincts tell her to do? Clap that son of a bitch. She punched me so hard in the face that I almost passed out. It's actually kind of hazy but I just remember being in a ton of pain, then being in the passenger seat of my car, then at the hospital. Apparently part of my zygomatic bone on the right side of my face, underneath your eyes where your cheeks are, now has a fracture, and that whole side of my face just looks completely fucked. It supposedly shouldn't require surgery thankfully, but man does it hurt. What was really fun was that they actually made us talk to a social worker because since I told the doctor my wife punched me in the face they obviously suspected domestic violence, and I kept having to say it was an accident. Complete completely understand why they had one interview us but did they really have to do it while I was high as balls on painkillers that I had never taken before in my life? So now I'm chilling at home in recovery, and my wife feels terrible. I swear every time I wake up from a narcotic induced nap I keep finding all sorts of treats on my nightstand as apology gifts, cookies, Kit Kat bars, potato chips. But I definitely learned that I need to make it very well known that I'm not some sketchy dude burglarizing our apartment from now on, apparently. Too long didn't read, too lazy to turn on the bathroom light, wife who is taller and stronger than me has PTSD from people breaking into her house and thought I was a burglar, wrecked the right side of my face with a punch comparable to fucking Saitama, and had to explain to the social worker at the hospital that I'm not being abused. Edit, this is the first time anything like this has ever happened. We already had an agreement of don't walk around the house in the dark and make your presence known to prevent anything like this from happening. And lo and behold I played a stupid game and won a stupid prize by being lazy. We don't keep firearms in our house, she's not going to kill me. The trauma is an explanation for wrecking my facial bones but not an excuse. But again, I did break our explicit agreement. She does feel really bad about it but I'm not going to guilt trip her over it. It was an accident, nothing more. But we both agreed now that A. She has to wear her glasses if she's leaving a room, even for a minute, B. We have a few night lights in the hallway, and C. Since we have separate bedrooms, if I'm in another part of the house, like the bathroom, in the middle of the night, I turn the light on so she knows it's me, and she can also knock on the door of where I am so I can answer. LMFAO your wife ain't fucking about. Clap that son of a bitch absolutely sent me lol. The best today I fucked up I've ever read dot dot dot. A today I fucked up indeed. Get proximity or motion sensors for bathroom lights. A today I fucked up indeed. Get proximity or motion sensors for bathroom lights. Ah forget that. Get a bathroom helmet. Clap that son of a bitch. I don't usually laugh out loud to posts but your setup and execution of that line was spot on. Thanks for the good laugh. Today I fucked up by using wet oven gloves to take out pizza from oven.
Did I mention I am a scientist? Okay this happened a couple of weeks ago. Me and my girlfriend, who is overly crazy about cleanliness and stuffs, like Monica from Friends, wanted to heat a frozen pizza. For some reason she washed the only oven glove I had which I rarely use anyways. The pizza is ready and probably 200 degrees hot, Celsius and tray probably 225. Where is the glove I asked? It's washed and is drying she said. I took it and it's still super wet but feels cold inside of course. Me, scientist by profession, thinking water is an insulator so it's even better for safety when it's wet right? She said yes. Did I mention she is also a scientist by profession, even it's cooler inside with water. Here comes the fuck up. I wear this sweat glove and confidently lifts up the tray, which is even hotter. Immediately realizes the fuck up and there was nothing nearby to place this goddamn 250 degrees hot tray which felt like holding a goddamn iron but from the hotter side. My reflex muscles decided to leave the hot plate but t the reflexes of my left hand decided to save the pizza at least from getting spoiled. Here comes another fuck up I tried to save the pizza from, yes. My left hand, pizza, 200 degrees, landing upside down on my left hand. Both of my hands are now burning and I am pondering to change my profession now. Too long didn't read burnt both hands by underestimating the thermal conductivity of water. Guys don't use wet gloves. Air is a much better insulator than water due to lower heat conductivity. Oven mitts are fluffy to trap air as insulation. When wet, the heat is transferred into water instead of air. I'm a fire safety engineer. It is the same for firefighters entering a hot environment. Entering with wet protective gear is a sure way to get burned. Yes and the fact that many machines which require water cooling actually uses this property, the water absorbs heat nicely and runs towards the chiller and releases this heat. A thick towel folded a few times does the trick. Now I know. Top 10 science experiments you can do at home. I like you. I will give this as assignment to my students. Well, the scientist discovers that they get burned when using wet oven gloves, so that the engineer knows not to do it afterwards. D. Switching profession to engineering then. Today I fucked up by reporting mod abuse to the mods. Background, as some of you might know, there was a bit of a kerfuffle the other day regarding a chicken and bread based post and comment on one of the default subreddits that turned into a viral today I fucked up, got totally out of hand and resulted in a complete meltdown, nuked comment sections, many permanent bans, and content being censored across multiple subreddits. I saw the initial fallout from the situation on Sunday, laughed and then forgot about it. I queued back into it when a mod sticky appeared on the relevant subreddit with the moderator claiming that there was more to the situation than it seemed. The moderator claimed the viral today I fucked up post misrepresented the situation and that the ops permanent ban wasn't exclusively due to any poultry posting but was because they were belligerent, unrepentant, and had a meltdown in the mod mail. I wanted to learn more. Well I did. And in my opinion, it looked like the moderator was at least exaggerating and at worst being dishonest. Moreover, they were completely feeding into the shenanigans by trolling, name calling, and generally acting a fool. Like a sandwich that's too spicy, it didn't sit right with me that a moderator should be acting in that manner, especially considering how overblown things had become. So I decided to share my concerns with the rest of the moderation team. Hey everyone, I'm sure you've been getting a lot of these, and probably a fair share of semi-coherent frothing, but as a moderator team you all should consider removing underscore from their moderator position. The whole weird fiasco that emerged over the last couple days can be written off as classic reddit mob mentality, but underscore has gone out of their way to stoke the situation in a way that is completely inappropriate for a community moderator. Their comment history on the topic is a mixture of exaggeration, trolling, name calling, just generally behavior that, in my opinion, shows that they are unfit for the role. I had a fine conversation with underscore on the topic, and I don't think they are necessarily a bad person, but I do feel that they have shown a severe lack of maturity based on how they have responded to the situation. I don't mean to offend anyone, just wanted to share my opinion based on what I've seen. I hope that you all are able to work this out in a way that's productive, 
transparent, and to the benefit of the community as a whole. Cheers. Well, I got permanently banned for brigading, and muted from appealing for 28 days. The risk of speaking truth to power. Too long didn't read, there's a thin blue line of mods, I fought the law and the law won, shared food for thought and was told to eat it. Edit, sort by controversial if you want to see a mod, now multiple mods, from another sub absolutely lose it in the comments. I was half joking when I said thin blue line of mods but wow. Edit 2, a big shout out and thank you to the today I fucked up mods for letting this stay up and for helping rain the mods from other, completely unrelated subs who have taken offense to this post. I want to be clear that I don't think all mods are bad. Mods are important. But if you get offended by someone suggesting mods should hold themselves to some kind of standard, you should probably take a hard look at yourself. The slash r slash food mods are a bunch of crybabies. It's actually hilarious. How quickly do you think I'd get banned if I posted a picture of a McChicken and titled it Chicken Sandwich? The mods really make me hate Reddit. I understand that sometimes people can be assholes and they need to step in, but from what I've seen the mods are the assholes in most situations. I got banned from Breaking Mum for posting a positive comment in Itu and then muted for asking why. I messaged the mod saying, it makes no sense that I'm banned for commenting in a totally different sub and had no idea. The mod said, k then bye, and muted me. I've been so salty about it since. Was permanently banned from writing prompts for posting a prompt that went something like. As I breasted Boobilly down the stairs, I realized, to my horror, that I was trapped in a teenager's erotic fanfiction. And one of the mods misread it as, blah 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 write an erotic fiction about a teenager. I was permanently banned, abused in mod mail and threatened with action from Reddit's overarching admin team because, ironically, the moderators of a writing subreddit couldn't read. Maybe the real chicken sandwich is the friends we made along the way. Roasted, minced, or fried, it's been a hell of a ride. The mod had a meltdown, or should I say grilled down? I believe we've already determined the mods refer to them as burger downs.